Can your telescope do this all while costing about $500 and weighing less than seven pounds? If not, you might be missing out. Thanks to All-Star Telescope, I got to spend a lot of time with the Seastar S50 and I got to test it out on a variety of targets. And I must say, I am a big fan. The Seastar includes a 50 millimeter triplet apochromatic refractor, an ASI 462MC camera built in, a tracking Altaz mount with go-to and plate solving capabilities to accurately find objects, a dark filter, a UV IR cut filter, a duo band filter for fighting light pollution, as well as an external solar filter for imaging the sun during the daytime. It also has a built-in dew heater and it comes with its own carbon fiber tripod. My favorite thing about the Seastar is just how easy it is to use. I can control everything directly from my phone. It doesn't have to be connected to my home Wi-Fi network and doesn't require data so I can use it anywhere out in the field. The built-in battery is estimated to last about seven hours. In practice, I found that it lasted about five hours for me with the dew heater on with an ambient temperature of about 10 degrees Celsius, which is quite respectable performance. The Seastar can also be powered using an external battery pack. Any regular USB battery pack will do the job. To make astrophotography as easy as possible, the Seastar automatically stacks all the frames that it captures and beams the result directly to your phone for viewing or sharing with your family and friends. However, you can also get the Seastar to save all of the raw frames in the Seastar, and later on, you can transfer them to the computer and process the data using your favorite astrophotography software to get even better results. For example, this was the image of Messier 13 that the Seastar captured by itself, and and here is what I was able to do with a little bit of processing on the computer later on. So despite the fairly small objective and the fairly small sensor size, the Seastar can capture some phenomenal detail on a whole variety of objects. Even though large objects such as the Andromeda Galaxy and the Pleiades won't entirely fit in the field of view, there are countless objects that are suitable for this field of view that you can image. Now the Seastar is not made to be a dedicated solar or lunar telescope because of the fairly short focal length. However, it can still do a respectable job of capturing images of sunspots as well as some details on the moon. Although the Seastar can image the planets, it can see the rings of Saturn and the moons of Jupiter for example, I wouldn't recommend this as a primary telescope for imaging the planets or the moon or the sun because of the fairly short focal length. But for what it is, which is a low cost, all-in-one, easy to use, portable imaging instrument, I think it does a phenomenal job. When beginners would ask me what telescope to buy to get started in astrophotography without spending too much money, my usual recommendation was to buy a used DSLR camera, a small refractor, and a star tracker. But now with the advent of capable smart telescopes such as the Seastar, I don't think I can recommend that anymore. Because of their much larger sensors, DSLRs will still have a place in astrophotography for me. However, the deciding factor for me has been the ease of use. Something like the Seastar is so much easier to use than a Star Tracker and a DSLR camera. And the price is simply unbeatable. I tried to price out the Seastar's capabilities and I tried to find equivalent components and see how much they would cost. And as you can see, trying to get these same capabilities in a traditional portable telescope setup would cost quite a bit more. One thing I would recommend to ZWO is to add a countdown timer uh, so that the user can determine how long the telescope should run for before it shuts down. If you found that review helpful, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions at all about the C-Star or about any of the accessories, I'd love to answer them in the comments as well. And if you want me to make more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit that like button. And also my next video is going to be a full tutorial on how to get the most out of the Seastar. Uh, so if you've bought a Seastar, be sure to check that out as well. Thank you for watching and clear skies.